In this exercise, we'll use a number of render passes of the car image, uh, these being different aspects of the image that were exported separately from the CGI application. Our goal will be to composite the car back into its original state, which is effectively the same as the beauty pass that was used in the previous exercise and the one that we can see on the screen at the moment. So this is where pretty much where we left off at the with the last at the last exercise with the beauty pass of the car and the background image composited together. This is the part of the script that we're looking at. I've actually removed the color grade that was actually uh, working against us in the previous exercise. So if we look over on this side of the of the no tree, we've actually got some additional passes that we can take a look at. These have already been uh, imported obviously into the node graph via the read node and these are the individual elements which make up the beauty pass so that but they've obviously been rendered separately. So what we'll do is that we'll just um, it's going to be a little bit tricky with, um, with the screen capture software on but what I'll do is I'll just get my n nodes up and we'll just take a look so I'll just hit um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll take a look at these images in turn. We'll come in a little bit closer so we can see. So we, the, adding these to the viewer in this way just means that we can toggle between them and take a look at them. So let's have a review of these passes. The one that we can see at the moment is the diffuse pass. The diffuse is flat light essentially reflected from the surface of the car as if it was made of some um, non-reflective material like felt. It has no shiny areas whatsoever. There's a little bit of shading, uh, but that shading is only really influenced by the ambient light source. This is the specular pass. And this is effectively picking up the shiny parts of the rendered surface. So essentially it takes on colours from the light source and the surface material. Um, and obviously th that would be dependent on the type of material. So obviously woods and metals would, ha would inherit different specular behaviours. This is the occlusion pass or ambient occlusion pass in longhand. Uh, you can see that this is a, um, a an RGB image. You can see if we look at the tabs along the bottom, this doesn't have an alpha channel and it's purely a grayscale image. Or we would think so, but sometimes they actually do contain a little bit of colour, but they certainly don't have an alpha channel. Um, and essentially the occlusion pass consi considers how ambient light is deflected, blocked, between and within objects and the result of that is it kind of casts subtle sh shadows and darkens regions of the screen particularly recesses you can see on this car the recesses in the grill and the car and the and the wheel detail and around the around the door mirror and these little sort of flutes in the front of the car this is where it's kind of picking up and it's adding more sophisticated areas of shadow into the uh, into the mix This is the reflection pass, and this basically accept, accept, accepts images to reflect essentially as if they were part of the scene. So, uh, so what's happening here is that a, um, a separate image is actually being cast into the reflection channel, which is kind of giving the impression that uh, a natural, a natural sort of image is casting reflections across the, the reflective surface of the car. We have an additional pass called a refraction pass, which uh, which essentially uh, is is really regarding how light bounces uh, from one element to another element. And you can see that what's happening here is it, is that we're getting parts of the car where where lights actually being bounced into in this particular case the recesses of the headlight, and the same on that side, and also some light detail being bounced into the interior of the car. So that's a very quick tour of the uh, of the passes that we're going to be using in this particular exercise I'll just disconnect all these uh, all these pipes and we'll take our uh, our render uh, our viewer sorry back across to this and there we are
right back where we start. So essentially we need to composite, we need to use these passes over on the on this side of the image to actually composite this back together and until we get this result but made up of the individual passes rather than this beauty pass. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take this um, this beauty pass out I'll just put it over there. We will come back to it later on just to do a quick compare but for now I'm going to replace that with the diffuse pass. Okay cannot make an omelette without breaking an egg and we've certainly broke the egg just here. Um, essentially the diffuse pass forms the base of any multipass multi -pass composite so it's always at the beginning of the node tree. So we can now start adding to this and we're going to begin by compos compositing some additive passes uh, and these are essentially passes that we want to uh, that we want to lay the areas with colour information over the over the top of this diffuse but then prevent the black or transparent areas from being seen. So let's take a look at this starting with the reflection pad. So we'll bring this into the scene. We'll just tie tighten these up just because space is limited within the uh, within the capture software and I'm just going to type M to bring up the merge node I'm adding this merge to the to the bottom so I'm concatenating the merge and connecting up the reflection pass to it now you can see that that at the moment has just overwritten the uh, the merge no the diffusion pass it's actually just laid over the top of it and completely obscured it Additive uh, passes uh, need us to approach the merge operation slightly different because we're actually laying the image over. We want the image to see the uh, the the non-transparent areas, but then hide the transparent or the pure black areas. So we need to actually come into this merge node, and we need to change the operation from an over node to a plus node. And here we are. So if I now sort of select my reflection node and just hit, hit D just to toggle it on and off, you can actually see the reflections being appended on or added to the diffuse pass. So we can perform this same operation with a couple of other nodes. We can take our refraction node, again type M to bring in a merge, bring this in to the to this merge tree which is now uh, which is now growing just stretch that out and then hook up our viewer to the new merge again it's laid over the top we don't want this is the refraction pass this is obviously the the light that's being bounced from our light source into other areas of the image but at the moment again it's laying over the top of both the diffuse and the reflection pass and obscuring both so again we need to come into this pass and we need to set the operation to plus. And if we just come in a little bit so we can see this, if we toggle it on and off, we can see that detail being applied, particularly into the recesses around the headlights, a little bit in the wheels, but particularly in the headlights and also into the interior of the car. So we'll perform one final additive pass which is the specular highlights again type M to bring the merge we'll take the B pipe into the previous merge just bring it into position this is where I'm starting to struggle with the limited space in the capture software just bring out my node tree and then hook up my viewer to the final node and again this specular is is, is obscuring the other layers so again I need to come into this and set the operation to plus and again if I just select the specular mode and start to toggle it on and off you can see that that's just adding a subtle illumination into the high into the highlights of the image so that's all the additive modes what else have we got here We've got a shadow node. I will actually delete that one. I'll ignore that. We will come back to that in a later exercise. This is the last pass that we haven't dealt with yet, and this is the ambient occlusion pass. As we said before, the ambient occlusion pass casts subtle shadows 
into the image it doesn't have an alpha channel and we're going to see a slight difference in the way that we apply this now again I'm going to choose the merge node I'll just bring this across and make a little bit of space and bring it in and connect it up to the previous one and then hook up the the viewer and again I can uh, I can use the dot node just to square it all up so we've got this particular pass at the moment it's set to over now what we've been doing so far is we've been changing this to plus okay we can see that that's has absolutely no effect so that's clearly not right so let's put that back to over as it was before now we need to think about this pass a little bit differently because we want to use the dark areas to build up the shadow information and we actually want the white areas to be discarded we have to actually approach this in the in the opposite a way that we've approached the additive modes this is more of a subtractive approach we actually need to use a different merge node to do this so we actually need to use a different operation which is the multiply operation if we take a look, if we take a look by toddling this now now that's interesting we know that in the past we've been able to we've been able to toddle that on and off and we've been able to review the impact that each of the passes has made on the composite image but we're not having that uh, we're not having much success in this particular case because the merge node is in multiply essentially when we uh, when we turn this off we make the image black so essentially what it's doing is it's multiplying black over the rest of the images which is why we're seeing nothing but black so we can't actually use that particular node and we can't do that with any subtractive pass there are several subtractive passes which operate in this way we can't actually use this particular approach to view the image what we have to do instead is we have to disable it at the next junction of the node tree which is actually on the merge itself so if I select the merge now and I toggle this we can now see if we look in the in the at the car in the viewing area we can actually see the result effect of the ambient occlusion pass and how it's been affected on the image so we can actually see those 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 subtle shatter, shadows being added around the base of the wheel in the um, in the grills around the front of the car and around the door mirror so that's the effect of the ambient occlusion pass so let's just perform a quick comparison we'll come across to uh, this was our original beauty pass so let's um, let's select this and add a merge and we'll take the B into our background and I'll just um, I'll just bring this out a little bit so that we can uh, we can see it um, and then I'll connect the number two channel of my viewer to this uh, to this pass so at the moment we're looking that's the that's the number two so that's the beauty pass and the background combined uh, if I type number one number two number one number two so you can see there that they're pretty much identical apart from the ambient occlusion which is being applied to the uh, to the to the to the multipass composite um, we can see that they're pretty much identical in fact if I just disable the merge node on the uh, on the and ambient occlusion and now I toggle between them you can see that they are completely identical so we've achieved our objective in terms of reconstructing the car using multiple passes and we've managed to get it to match our uh, our original beauty pass so I guess that begs the question well what's the point well the point is is that we can now access the individual parts of the image and actually perform a variety of enhancement effects so that's what we're going to do in the next exercise